This is R2D Tech and we're back again this week with a very exciting video. We're going to be talking about the S10, S10 Plus and S10e, so stay tuned. In terms of design, the new S10 series follows a very similar design language to the S9 series, except this year they've decided to shrink the bezels a bit more and implement a camera cutout system which they've been prototyping for a while now. This makes the whole phone look a bit more futuristic. On the S10 you have a single cutout, but on the S10 Plus you have the dual cutout for two camera sensors. Now this obviously gives you some more functionality, but we'll talk about that later. Now you've still got the glass sandwich which allows for wireless charging, but then the S10e has a slightly different design. While the S10 and S10 Plus have the edge displays, the S10e doesn't and it has slightly larger bezels on the side as well. But this isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially since you're saving quite a lot of money. And the S10e reminds me very much of the iPhone XR when it comes to design. Now, of course, you have a very nice aluminium body around the display and glass back on all of these phones. So you're getting very premium material for your money. Now we're going to talk about what's inside these amazing phones. So with the S10e, you're getting up to 8 gigs of RAM and up to 256 gigs of storage which is pretty respectable in itself, but you also have to take into account that you also get an expandable storage slot of up to 512 gigs, which is massive. With the S10, you get up to eight gigs of RAM and up to 512 gigs of storage, along with that expandable storage slot, and the S10 Plus, you're getting up to 12 gigs of RAM and up to a terabyte of internal storage, plus the expandable storage, which is absolutely massive. Another advantage of getting any of these phones is getting that Snapdragon 855 processor, which while a lot faster than any previous processor from Snapdragon, it's also a lot more power efficient. So you're gonna see an increase in battery life as well. When it comes to battery, the S10 Plus has an enormous 4100 milliamp hour battery. This is more than enough to get you through one day, if not two especially since the new Snapdragon 855 processor is so power efficient. The S10 on the other hand has a 3400 mAh battery, which is still very respectable and will definitely get you through one day, if not a bit more. The S10e on the other hand has a 3100 mAh battery, which is quite a bit smaller, and it will probably still get you through the day since the new chipset is so power efficient, but you might see a few problems in the long term. One of the most important features on any phone is the camera. So on the S10 and S10 Plus, you're getting three rear cameras. And to me, the most important one is the wide angle lens. Because of how wide it is, it's one of the most wide, wide angle lenses we've seen on any smartphone. And you can imagine that that could be really useful in so many situations. For the S10e, you just get two rear cameras, which is acceptable considering the price that you're paying for it. For front-facing cameras, you get one on the S10e and the S10, but two on the S10 Plus, and one of them will be a wide-angle lens, but to me, it doesn't seem as wide as I would have hoped, like on the Pixel devices. In terms of software, Samsung have implemented their new One UI software, which is what they've been working on for the past couple of years. And the idea is to make it look a lot more like stock Android, which it really does, except the icons are different, and I personally don't like them that much. But that's definitely something you can correct with a skin or an add-on yourself, since it is Android, and it's very customizable. Now, another software implementation was actually on the camera. They use AI now on the camera to detect scenes and different objects, so they can put pre-installed enhancements on your photos using machine learning and artificial intelligence to make them look what they think is a professional photo. Now, they've analyzed 100 million photos to do this, and they'll actually adjust your photo spatially as well, and in terms of color, contrast, shadows, highlights, effects, and more, to make it look a lot more professional now, which is definitely the way forward, because software is the way that they're making photos look better on smartphones nowadays, rather than the sensors themselves. So now we're going to talk about some of the features you get with these phones. So in terms of colors, 
you actually get a really wide variety and uh, to me the best looking is prism white. You also get this color that kind of mimics the coral of the iPhone XR which also looks pretty nice. For the Bixby button you can actually remap it this year which is really nice to see considering we haven't been allowed to do it for the past two generations of phones. Bixby still can't really compete with the likes of Google Assistant and Alexa but hopefully Samsung might improve that. One of the standout features of the S10 and S10 Plus was the fact that you can actually charge other devices through the back of this phone. So you can charge a friend's phone, maybe their new Galaxy Buds or even the Galaxy Watch. So that's a really useful feature to have on a phone like this. Once again, Samsung are now the only flagship company to keep the headphone jack, which is really good to see. In conclusion, these phones are definitely great devices and definitely not the incremental updates that we've seen in the past from Samsung. In terms of price, you're paying around £700 for the S10e, which is reasonable if you compare it to the iPhone XR. The S10 will start around £800, which is also fairly respectable for a flagship model. But then if you upgrade this or opt for the S10 Plus phone, you're going to be paying more than £1,000, which is a lot of money for a smartphone. You can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious! You're definitely getting a lot of premium features and materials, and it definitely compares to a premium company like Apple. But it's really whether you're willing to spend that much on a smartphone. And personally, I think that companies need to start reversing this upward trend in the prices. But that's not to say these phones aren't excellent, so I would definitely recommend them if you exclude price from the argument. That's it from us at R2D Tech, and we really enjoyed Samsung's lineup this year. It's just whether you're willing to spend so much money on a smartphone. But stay tuned and come back to us next week where we'll be releasing more videos on the folding smartphone and probably the Samsung 5G models of the S10.